All right, in this video, this is gonna be the mixed review part 13. These two problems here are similar to problems 26 and 27 found in the mathematics sections quiz in the ATIT study manual. Problem 26, a blueprint for a house states that every inch on the blueprint corresponds to four feet in the actual house. If a rectangular shaped bedroom measures five inches by four and a half inches on the blueprint, what is the actual area of the bedroom in the house? Leave your answer in square feet. So what I've drawn here is a rectangular shaped room on our blueprint that measures five inches by four and a half inches. Notice it is a rectangular shaped room. And we want to find the actual area of the room, not the area of the blueprint, but the actual area of the bedroom in the house. So what I would do first here is I would take these inches and I would convert them to the actual feet in the house. And notice that it says here, every inch on the blueprint corresponds to four feet in the actual house. The quickest way to approach this problem is to multiply the five inches. There's five inches here and each one of these five inches on this blueprint represents four feet in the actual house. If we take five times four, those five inches correspond to 20 actual feet. That five inches on the blueprint, each inch represents four feet, so five times four gives us 20 feet. That's gonna be the length, or whatever you wanna call it right there. Same thing for the four and a half inches. Let's take four and a half inches, let's multiply that by four because each inch of this four and a half inches represents four feet. Four and a half times four is going to give you 18 feet. So therefore, this is our blueprint, but in real life, those five inches represents 20 feet in real life. The four and a half inches represents 18 feet. This is the quickest approach to simply multiply those by how many feet are represented by one inch. You could do proportions here, but we're after speed on the T's test, doing this problem as quickly as possible. Now the actual answer we're trying to find, we're trying to find the actual area of the bedroom. This is a rectangle, and the area of a rectangle is going to be length times width or base times height. Doesn't really matter, you just wanna multiply these two numbers together to find the actual area of the bedroom. So therefore, 20 feet times the 18 feet. This is the actual area. 360 square feet. And there we had that 360 square feet right there. Be very careful when you read these types of problems. A rectangular shaped bedroom, that's how I got the rectangle idea. Five inches by four and a half inches, that's what I drew here. You don't have to draw pictures by any means on the T's test. But the big shortcut here is realizing this. One inch represents four feet in real life. So if we have five inches and each one of those inches is four feet in real life, that's why I multiplied the five times four. You could try proportions here, but since we're after speed, that's the approach I'm going to take here. Same thing for the four and a half inches times four. We get our two actual measurements in feet for the actual room, and since we want the actual area, we take length times width. That's how we got the 360 square feet. And something else to point out up here too, this little last sentence right here, leave your answer in square feet, that's why we left it the way it was right there. Check out some of the other videos I've done on area and geometry. Geometry with area is always gonna be in square units. Number 27, if you average 65 miles per hour on a road trip and you have already traveled for four hours, about how many more hours do you have to travel if the entire road trip is 840 miles? assuming you maintain the same average speed. Let's round to the nearest hour. So rereading this, we're averaging 65 miles per hour and we've already traveled for four hours. Let's take the 65 miles per hour and let's multiply it by four hours to figure out how far we have traveled. What I'm doing here is I'm taking a rate times a time and that's going to give us a distance. Our rate, our speed was 65 miles an hour times four hours will get a distance of 260 miles. So this is how far we have already traveled for that four hours. Now, how much more time, how many more hours do we have to travel if the entire road trip is 840 miles? The entire trip is 840 miles. We have already gone 260 miles of that trip. So therefore, let's subtract these two, the total trip minus how far we've already gone for the first four hours, 
to figure out how much further we have to go. We get 580 miles left. Now, we have 580 miles left to go. If we go back to this rate times time equals distance formula, we can do a little bit of algebra to figure out how much longer in terms of time we have to travel to go the remaining 580 miles. Assuming we maintain the same average speed, so I'm gonna use that same 65 for my speed. We don't know how much time we need to travel to go a total distance of 580 miles, the total distance that we have left at least. Again, we have already gone the 260 miles in the first four hours. We wanna figure out how much more time do we have to travel for to go the remaining 580 miles, assuming we maintain the same average speed. This is an equation. To solve this equation, we can divide by 65. Now some of you may have known this, that you could just simply take that distance and divide by your speed, which is exactly what we're doing here, and this will tell you the time that you have left. So taking the 580, dividing by 65, we will have roughly 8.9 hours, so I'm going to say this is approximately nine hours, since the problem did say round to the nearest hour. A way we can check our work is that we've traveled for four hours. We're saying we have nine hours roughly left to go. We did round this now, keep that in mind, but it was pretty close to nine hours. So the total time would be the four hours that we have already traveled plus the nine remaining hours. And remember, we were traveling at this speed, this average speed of 65 miles an hour the entire time. So check this out. If we take our rate, 65, times our total time for the trip, which we said the four and the nine gives us 13. So that's our rate times a time. Check out this distance, 845 miles. That's pretty close to 840. And the reason why it's not exactly 840 is because we did get 8.9 hours for this. So when we actually incorporate the nine with the four, we are going to get something slightly bigger. But again, just a way to check your work there for that problem and you know, in this particular problem here, rate times time equals distance. Don't stress about trying to memorize that formula as long as you understand. If you know a speed and you know a time, you can multiply those two things together to get your distance. And then in this case, once we figured out how much further we had left to travel, maybe you can think, all right, I know my distance. I know how fast I was going. So we can take our distance and divide by our speed to figure out the remaining amount of time that we have left. And there you have it, problems 26 and 27, very similar to what you will see in the ATIT study manual and pretty similar to what you will hopefully see on the T's test. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.